The ships appear to hover in a perfect V-shaped alignment, seemingly posing for Meyer's camera. Then, in an instant, two ships are gone, leaving just a single craft shining brightly in the sunlight. While Meyer's visually compelling UFO films have made believers of many, skeptics have always considered them very suspicious. But now, newly discovered evidence reveals how Meyer appears to have carried out the longest running UFO hoax on record. We know and can prove that he makes UFO models. He admits that. Having been to his property, you can see that he grows small trees. And lo and behold, when you look at his films, you see the same tree, in fact, in several of his films taken at different locations. That's impossible. Investigative journalist Cal Karf has made several clandestine trips to Meyer's Swiss farm to uncover his secret methods. Meyer uses small trees and models in a technique known as forced or false perspective, where you put the model in the tree very close to the camera, you have the house or the mountain in the background, and what you have basically is an optical illusion that to the trained eye isn't convincing. Top Hollywood cinematographer Dean Cundy agrees. If you watch the, the motion of the UFO, it is a pendulum kind of motion. Now, it's not a free-hanging pendulum. It's possibly a stiffer wire than maybe just monofilament. If you use a small model and suspend it a lot closer to the camera than you think, maybe eight or 10 feet away, it allows you to create the illusion that the miniature is, in fact, a lot further away than it is. Kunde sees even more elaborate rigging of a model behind this purported flying saucer caught on film. Now, in this particular clip, it suddenly makes an appearance down here just above the horizon. Then it begins to move up, which would indicate that it's suspended on some kind of a clothesline rig or some kind of a device that relies on pulling on a rope or a line to, to get it to travel. And it, it appears to sort of hover up kind of nice and slowly, a little intermittently. What's interesting, though, is if you run it even backwards faster, you notice that it has sort of an oscillation, almost as if somebody's pulling on a rope. Allegations that Meyer uses clever trick photography to hoax his UFO footage have been made for years. And now, in this rare interview, Meyer challenges his detractors to meet with him face to face. Uh, Most people who attacked me never came and met me in person, never talked to me. They just either invented their photographic tests or reworked the tests of other people who had attacked me before. But they never bothered to investigate my case in person. However, a person who knows Meyer better than anyone else, his own ex-wife, Poppy Meyer, also accuses him of being a blatant hoaxer. She points to his most recent UFO film, as perhaps his most outrageous fake ever. The truth is my ex-husband is lying regarding the UFO affair. When I saw the UFO pictures that looked like a wedding cake, I asked myself, where did I see these lines before? This underpart. I realized it was a lid from a trash can. I compared the lid with the spaceship and identified these lines as being exactly what is on the lid. Poppy Meyer reveals that her ex-husband's skillful use of models and household implements is not only manipulative, but downright dangerous. She warns that he is using his faked UFO images to finance and promote a cult. Thousands of followers worldwide have flocked to Meyer because they believe his message. Namely, that the end of the world is coming, and that his films prove he is the one chosen by aliens to help mankind survive. Meyer's critics say he has his cult completely under his control. Billy Meyer is like a god to them. This is a man who claims to be the Messiah. This is a man who tells you how to live your life, how many children you should have. While there's no hard evidence, Meyer's debunkers believe his cult could even turn apocalyptic, like Heaven's Gate. If so, his clever film hoaxes, which have attracted so many true believers, are not innocent deceptions but a potentially destructive form of mass manipulation. In Switzerland, we've already seen a couple of examples of what can happen inside a cult that is tied up with the UFO subject. The Solar Temple, for example, 
their members killed themselves and were also murdered. And it is a fact that some of the members that are now dead in the Solar Temple were in and out of the Meyer cult. And I am predicting that if something isn't done, Billy Myers may be the very next cult within a few years that may end up like the Solar Temple. Next, for the first time on television, the man who helped create the infamous alien autopsy hoax confesses. We were contracted to create the uh, tent footage and the actual alien head. Also, the secrets behind the biggest hoax ever. There's a white sheet over the body and a tearing it. When World's Greatest Hoaxes Secrets Finally Revealed returns. Of all the hoaxes ever filmed or videotaped, none has captured the public's imagination like the alien autopsy footage. When it was released by a British businessman in 1995, it made front page headlines in newspapers throughout the world. Respected pathologists and top special effects experts were initially baffled by this realistic dissection of an alleged extraterrestrial. Viewers in dozens of countries have seen these shocking images of a 17 minute autopsy itself, as well as approximately two minutes of what was purportedly the wreckage from the alien spacecraft, which many claim crashed in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. But the darkly lit footage you are seeing here has never been shown on national television. Although the alien autopsies films promoters in England claimed it showed doctors at the Roswell crash scene examining the alien prior to the full autopsy, its poor quality made it difficult to broadcast until now. And in it lies the key to what can now be conclusively said is a hoax of monumental proportions. In this exclusive enhancement produced by the same technology that NASA uses to sharpen images from space, telltale signs of the hoax have been revealed. Look here. The supposed doctor's faces can now clearly be seen. Who are they? After an exhaustive investigation, one has been positively identified. He's no doctor. He's never been to Roswell. And he wasn't filmed in 1947, but videotaped in 1994. It's very clear. Um, it's amazing what NASA technologies can do. I mean, I'm just absolutely astounded. I mean, I've been revealed, you know. What can I say? It's, it's there, you can see for yourselves. I have been revealed. Elliot Willis is a former technician at a British production company called AK Music. He says in this world exclusive interview that the Englishman who promoted all the footage hired the group to hoax the crash scene examination footage months before he released the full alien autopsy video in 1995. Instructions? Shoot what he could claim was an alien autopsy performed in a makeshift tent erected right after the UFO crash in 1947. I purchased a polystyrene wig head. I then thinned down the face with a file and the nose to make it more gaunt looking and applied a thin layer of latex to simulate skin texture. Willis says that while he was initially stumped as to how to fabricate the eyes for the creature being autopsied in the tent footage, his mother came up with a simple, yet effective solution. My mum stepped in and said, hey, why don't you uh, get an orange segment? She said, I said, that's like an orange segment? What are you talking about? She's like, well, just listen to me. If you cut it into four and then you bend it, you then get that ellipse shape. So I did that, uh, cut it to size, then tacked it in with small dressmaking pins, then covered it in black gloss paint. One of the, the directors, Andy, uh, knew someone who had a farm who had a really dark, kind of dingy kind of backroom that we could use. We asked Willis to explain how the footage was hoaxed. It was not a mask. It was placed where his head should have been, and then the, the uh, sheets were brought up to cover it. Willis identified the actor on the left side of the screen as a local butcher named Ian. Um, there's a white sheet over the body and a tearing it uh, with a plastic bag. We're putting out um, sheep intestines and guts and bits, stuff like that. Um, we're cutting out with scalpels and stuff. According to Willis, the figure moving in the front left corner of the frame is supposed to be a nervous American president who flew to the scene 
In reality, the actor is the man who owned the barn where the footage was staged. To help make it look authentic, Willis was put in charge of aging the footage, and then he added one final touch, film scratches. I got the animation department to create me a loop of scratches. You can see those coming in. You see those? In 1994, we actually finished the uh, tent footage, and uh, it was ready and delivered. By the summer of 1995, the press began reporting that both the alien autopsy tent footage and possibly a more elaborate video showing a full alien dissection in a brightly lit medical facility. Right away, Willis pieced together the obvious connections. When I actually heard the news reports, I mean, the press went mad. They were reporting um, alien autopsy footage um, found. I realized that this was part of a big package, that he had used our tent footage originally to get the story going, and then and he promoted the alien autopsy footage after that, once he had got everyone's interest. <laughs> 